So, just before we were talking about what brought us together today, yeah. which is my Ambira Magic activities, yeah. and that that's generated a lot of passion yeah. from various... Is passion the best word you can... Yeah, I think people are passionate about Ambira. Okay. Um, and you were talking about... There's white academics, black academics, yeah. uh, each with their own histories and maybe their, their own distance as well from the experience of playing in Bira. Yeah. Um. <coughs> yeah, you know, when I talk about building bridges, you know, I've been in England now for 20 years and... Uh, you know, I teach, I perform, but I learn as well, being in a different place. You know, if you can imagine an African Zimbabwean guy living in Devon, deep English. Uh, I've learned, the, the most thing I've learned, you know, for 20 years is that We've got a problem with the academic structure. And this structure comes with, you know, the way we teach, the way we learn from each other. That is usually not encompassed in the education as a whole. I believe that uh, high education institutions like universities, colleges, should be able to accommodate education that comes from different cultures. And, and that, for me, is what Britain, England in particular, because there's so much tolerance, but that structure is kind of not there where we can have an intercultural exchange whereby we pull together the musicians, the academics, general people, ordinary people, you know, the community, the it's strange to hear you say this when I looked at your book last night. You went to a university yeah. and then they found the funding to work with you to create a new new type of book. Yeah, but, but, but you see, in there, you know, there's kind of awareness of this. But, you know, when you have an in, in, in a university that has got different disciplines. You know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Musicians. So languages and... Uh, yeah. In that environment, these things, interdisciplinary education is not there. Even though you have all these disciplines, that's what the universities are struggling with. And to, to have a, a, a setup that has got all these things, but they don't pull it together. You know, for an example, you could have actors, the drama people, they are not working with the musicians mm -hmm. to create music that they are producing on stage. And you don't have creative writers who are writing the, the, the play, working with actors and musicians alike. Yeah. This is lacking, but the, 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 the setup is there. But what is lacking is the work that pulls this together. And also it's less easy to quantify. Well, it's, like it's about measuring, isn't it? How do we measure if it is like this? And, and in, a mean, in the meanwhile, everything is kind of going towards technology. 
does technology and science of course that's all okay but can they work together because that's what life is supposed to be like so you just said you know i had a, 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 a collaboration that was funded by the arts council of england that's that's okay the arts council and the university helped to do this but what what was done with the work is basically in that you have to read that and even if you read that chapter in the end we talked about only the positive things the misunderstandings and the conflicts that came with that idea of bringing a string quartet and the traditional musicians together in the article it feels like everything was smooth but it wasn't yeah. so we've got a problem there of uh, you know in that writing the thing i don't like is that we spend a lot of time quoting people who wrote something about that yeah instead of actually going into the substances of what happened when these musicians met that's a problem right there because the structure the methodology of writing an academic thing suggests that you have got to quote other people why do i have to do that because what I just did here is nothing to do with whatever person wrote before. Where did we have a misunderstanding? Where did we understand each other? You know, like what you were showing me yesterday about the things, if they are flipped, you know, they, how they look similar. That's all right. But what are the problems of the dialogue? So the way that I presented the information is that or are you saying there's some dialogue coming from the Avera Magic project? Well, there is some dialogue, but we need to s talk about the problems. Because if we are going to educate, you know, if I'm telling my, my child that the fire burns, I have to make sure that I put the idea bef <coughs> before she's burnt, mm -hmm. so that she understands. But most of the times, she understands better if she's actually burnt. So we have to find a way of describing the, 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 the pain of the burnt so that they understand it without getting burnt. So in your book then, if you were able to spend more time saying what the experience was with the string quartet yeah. and less quoting, yeah. then the message, the feeling would be yeah. communicated. Yeah. yeah, and then the people who is reading that, they say, actually, before I even go for a collaboration I need to understand these things that comes when people don't understand each other because it's not always pleasant so that's the academic structure and that's that's what made me actually start in Ndira Academy because I thought okay I've got to do things in my own way and I'll, I'll tell you I'll give you some information about that now, the, the, the po problem of actually understanding the history, in my case, I'm talking about the history of colonialism, to understand what the misunderstandings were. It's not saying you are praising it, and we all take responsibility, because the colonialism didn't only succeed because they came forcing there were other african people who were helping the colonizing in there's a song chemtangula sell out and this happened even with slavery the the west didn't just go to africa and pick people there were kings there who were either you would call it bribing or they were trading they get what they want and they sell their own people and it's still happening today but you're you're saying about not looking for fault yeah because then we end up blaming each other but everybody there around that time was wrong mm. so we have to appreciate that and in that sense there's a problem as well with the black british or the african-american people that they look at africa is the the problem of their the source of the problem of their lives that they were African people who sold their ancestors as slaves 
and they don't want to associate themselves with that. Mm. So there's a misunderstanding there. And then we have to look at the academics. I'm sorry, I have to be colorful here. The white academics and the black academics who actually don't collaborate in, in, in talking. You could have some white academic who wrote the history of colonialism that is conflicting with the history of colonialism that was written by a black African mm -hmm. person. They don't actually talk to each other. But these people have gone to the same university. It could be London University. It could be, I don't know... Um, but you're not saying that the the white person shouldn't do the writing and the black person shouldn't do the writing, but there should be more coming together. Yeah, and 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 collect their information equally and agree and disagree, you know, because we've got these questions that okay, that West Western person wrote that history about colonialism in Zimbabwe, but who did he write for? And then we have. The African people thinking, oh, because I'm African, I'm writing this history, I am right. Yeah. There's a conflict there, isn't it? A big, big academic conflict. But these people have gone together at Harvard. They were in the same lectures. But in those lectures, they were not saying, okay, here's the information we are getting. They are saying, oh, okay, I'm, I'm learning about the behavior of the white people. So how are you connecting this to where Ambira is? Because then you have this problem that we have in the Ambira world where you have some academics who are white who are questioning what you are trying to do with Ambira. And you have African people who are saying, what has got that to do with Ambira? You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. These are academic people. So in a, in a world of academics who came to study in England or in America and they go back to Zimbabwe, and when they go back to Zimbabwe, they are going to build their own cocoon about pan-Africanism. But that knowledge they are using to do that, they came to Babylon to learn about the language, and then they go back. They are not actually building bridges to, to, to celebrate that they went to London University, to SOAS, or to uh, Boston University, or New York University, or Harvard University. A good example I was telling you was me playing with an American musician mm -hmm. who wrote a book about Zimbabwean music and there's academic women in New York living in New York they love this life but back home they are coming from rich so this is Zimbabwean. The Zimbabwean academics yeah at the concert yeah and they are questioning this guy I'm playing with who wrote a book and they're saying, who does he think he is? And this is over a decade's worth of yeah. effort. Yeah, who does he think he is? We can write better than he did. But why didn't he write? And these are the people who, as African, they talk like they know a lot about Dimbira. But back home, where they came from, they were elite, they were rich, African Zimbabweans who have got that access of sending children to a university in New York. But at home there, they were looking at Mbira saying, uh, these Mbira players are vagabonds, marombe. And now they're in New York, I at home they were going to church. Roman Catholic Salvation Army and their education, all Jesuits, was through that. And then now they are talking this language in New York and everybody is respecting them. Oh, they are there, these educated. But they are talking 
as if they know a lot about the Buddha. Why are these all white people playing Buddha? This is our traditional, somebody selling out. And then you have the white academic saying, you shouldn't do that. I, I know better. So white academic telling other white people not to write because something is protecting and yeah. maintaining. Yeah, everybody's and So protecting. your opinion is that if somebody wants to write about Mbira, they should write about Mbira? They should write about Mbira with passion, with empathy, and what they know. It doesn't matter how long. And if they want to play, they should play. There shouldn't be a question of colour there. That's racism. And you promote the building of bridges and connections between players and writers. Yeah, and it's not only about the instrument, is it? It's about people. The people that this instrument represents and the context. This is what I was saying. We shouldn't forget the context. So we ended up we end up having policing around. You know, some people thinking what I'm doing, this building doing this thing that Chatwell is doing is nonsense. He has been in London and he's gone to Seoul. So whatever he says is it's all post colonial. But it's actually a like embodiment of this um, Bira ceremony experience where there is where I grew up. Yeah, that never changed. But I learned about other things and the, the things that is to do with the, the people. I wouldn't live in, in Devon if I wasn't learning about the people in Devon and how I fit into that culture. You know, I was in London. It's different, as you know. That's a multicultural. You think London has got lots of different people, but they don't also get on all the time so then you hey, you come to this rural in segment you know how how do i fit you have to ask yourself how why is this african guy living in devon there's lovely people they nothing like colonial status you know i was saying before i came i thought you were all bastards nothing like that here because if it was like that i wouldn't be here and there's still People with the mind, the same mindset you had, yeah. still in Zimbabwe that haven't had the benefit. Yeah, and these are the people I like, and most of all, the young people. That's where we have to start. Now you have other Mbira players who are not academics, generally just Mbira players, who think that they've got judgment about the Mbira, which which is the best and the idea that Mbira can be made in Germany by Sebastian Port, which is the story I'm going to connect with this. Sebastian Port is a Mbira maker. Shall we take him in the next video? Okay.